Hello, everyone. Um, if you guys know me, you know I am passionate about coming alongside parents and try to help them raise godly children. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a testimony. Matter of fact, I was, I was asked to just share this testimony, and I've shared it with a few people recently, and it was just, it was really powerful in my life um, uh, whenever I experienced this happen to me and my own family. And so eventually, I, here, I want to share this with you. But um, if you guys know, I've put together a powerful parenting series video, and I am in that video, I spend, or that series, I spend four weeks just on biblical discipleship, how God disciples his own children. But uh, in, that, in that series, I'll make many, many times, I will talk about a man named Caesar Milan. And he had a show, I don't know if it's still on, but it was called Dog Whisperer. And he would go to homes and deal with a lot of different cases with dogs. And I know everything doesn't transfer over with your children. I understand that. But many, I think there's many principles that apply. And in most of the cases that he would go and deal with the dogs, he would realize that that it's, it was actually the owners that needed to be trained, that he needed to show them how to, to disciple their, the dogs in the right way. And so many times when I've been discipling my own children, I have sensed God just doing the same thing to me, just speaking the same words that I've spoken to my children or, or in the process of speaking to my children, and he's speaking the same things to me. So I want to just spend just a few moments and share a couple testimonies with you in my own life. But uh, what I'm wanting to look at is not just the nuts and bolts of discipleship, but how the iniquity, the, maybe the stubbornness or a, a spirit upon a father or a mother can be transferred down to the child. And that we can be working on the child, but not realize that the source of the problem may be ourselves. Obviously, in the Bible, it talks about the iniquities of the fathers being passed down to the third and fourth generations. But he also says, showing his love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So God is saying, listen, for a righteous man who loves me, I'm going to bring such blessing on that child. And, and if you're being rebellious and you have this, this spirit about you, whether it's disrespect or anger or lust or whatever it is, that will pass down. And those iniquities will, will also be influential in the lives of the children. So the question I want to ask you is, could there be spiritual forces that are affecting the behavior of your children and, and my children? I don't by any means think that this is something that applies in every time that you're trying to disciple your children. But I've started asking myself, uh, Lord, is there something that I need to look at myself whenever I see something that I'm trying to disciple my children in? And are they picking this trait up in me? Is there a spirit in my own life that could be influencing this situation? So here's the testimony. Um, one of the testimonies is, it's about a same child. I won't tell you which one, but about one of my, one of my boys. And for, for quite some time, probably nine months, um, I was trying to to help them every single morning. We would try to get their bottle and things. And this child was so angry every morning. They would wake up and it would just sound like they were going to break the door down, just screaming at the top of their lungs. I want Baba. <laughs> and they would, I would just try to work with them and say, buddy, calm down. You don't need to yell. Daddy will get you your bottle. And, and we would go to the refrigerator and make him a bottle and things. But, um, one night, God revealed something to me, and I literally laid in my bed for around seven and a half hours. My wife was sleeping next to me, and I just laid there quietly listening to this sermon that just so convicted my heart that spiritual passion had in many areas turned to anger. 
And for years, I had been struggling with this anger, just thinking it was all spiritual passion. And God just showed me that he was doing surgery on my heart as he was there and just separating for seven and a half hours, just separating what was true spiritual passion that was for his kingdom and things that were good. And what was driving me also out of anger and bitterness and things like that. And I just lay there and wept as he was just doing spiritual surgery on me. I went out to my study and I was studying and my wife walked out. And this is just an unbelievable story. She opened the door and she started talking to me and said, Steve, I believe that God has showed me something. I believe you have a spirit of anger on your life. And at that point, she started crying. She just said, I just believe you're being affected by this, like just, just this anger inside of you. And I don't think you're going to be able to take one step forward until you really deal with it with God. And she didn't know, I don't think that I had been laying there the entire night, basically just, just under conviction and just having this heart surgery by God. And uh, I'll never forget what happened after I renounced that spirit of anger when I recognized it and what God had just taken me through that surgery and then just confirmed it through my wife. And she came out there and just shared what she was feeling that God had shown her as well. And we just wept together out there. And I told her what God had just shared with me. And, uh, but the crazy part was this. After probably nine months of trying every morning, everything I could possibly do to try to teach my son to com- come in calmly and ask for a bottle, nothing would work. But the very next morning, my son came in early in the morning and just said, Daddy, Baba, Daddy, Baba. <laughs> and I just about fell out of my bed as I realized I believed that I had been affecting my son. Although I didn't believe I had shown anyone exterior in the, on the exterior that I was angry and didn't even really know it myself. But when God revealed that to me and I was willing to renounce it and repent of it and turn from it then God, I believe, did something for my little son. And if it was just that one time, I would would have said, maybe it could be a coincidence, but I just don't believe so. Because I believe there was another spirit that was at work on my son even before this. That very same son, once he started nursing, he did not nurse like my other children. He would get up ever since he was a little baby. He would, he would wake up any, every time between 15. I think the longest that he ever slept was like 45 minutes without nursing. And he would wake up and just be angry and screaming. And uh, my wife would nurse him and put him back to bed. And that went on for a couple of years. And finally, I just told my wife, I said, honey, I'm not allowing this to go on one more day. I'm going to take him and I'm going to let you nurse him and then I'll get him a bottle and I will take him out in the living room and, and you can just sleep and I will take care of him. And that, and that night, the first night was a miserable night of just a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming. And, and it went on to the second night and then the third night and then the fourth night. And I was getting exhausted Um, But I was just convinced that I was going to cause change to happen here. And so um, the fourth night, I'd actually cleared my son out of the the very end of the house so I could I could be back there with this with this other son. And and I was back there and it was like two o'clock in the morning. And my son was just screaming and yelling and he he didn't want to take his bottle and and uh, I just started thinking, Lord, this isn't right. This is crazy. What is going on? And I just started crying out to God and I started praying. I said, God, please show me what is going on with my son. And I just felt like it was such a weird thing that God would give him the proper desire to eat. And then there should have been fulfillment of that desire and then satisfaction. But it just seemed like there was a spirit of lust on him where it was just constant desire, fulfillment, and then it went right back to desire just over and over in the cycle, never quit. And I was just sitting there praying and I felt like God just took me back to as a young man at 13, I had ran across some pornography and I had been gripped by this for a month, a month of my life, I remember was a living hell for me. 
I would repent and beg God to forgive me and then go back and just back and forth and back and forth. And I had finally just come to complete freedom and I was so grateful. And I have walked since that time in freedom from this. And I've been so blessed in my life in this area. And so I had no earthly idea that this could have anything to do with my son. But I felt like God showed me so clearly that night as I was praying. Steve, you don't understand, and I still don't understand, all the connections and how may soul ties and, and spiritual curses and generational curses and all of these types of things can work. But as I was, as I was laying there or sitting there praying for God to give me wisdom, I felt like he was directing me just to cut all the ties from anything I had ever seen. And so I started just confessing my sin, sitting there on the bed and saying, God, when I was a young man, I did this. And I don't even know how all this works. But if there's anything affecting my son right now from what I've done, I'm begging your forgiveness. I'm begging your cleansing. And I'm asking you to reveal it to me and to break in the spiritual realm anything that could be passed down to him. And as I renounced my sin and begged for God's mercy, And ask for him to literally bind the forces if there was anything affecting my son. I will never forget, I don't think as long as I live, what happened. I laid my hands on my son and I just started binding these spiritual forces. And if there was anything that had come through me that was affecting my son, I just asked God to give him the grace to be more than a conqueror. And that it would be be destroyed right then. And as I laid my hands on my son and started praying for him, he instantly got quiet within just a few seconds and he laid down and went to sleep. And the crazy thing was, is that was the first night since we had him, to my knowledge, that this little boy went to sleep and he slept until seven something in the morning for the first time ever. And I walked out and said, what in the world just happened? And it has been that way ever since. And I believe that God was showing me something so powerful that many times we can be working outwardly at trying to get behavior modification. And it can be things that are being passed down from us to our children. And the possible, the list is just, it seems endless. It could be a spirit of anger like it was on me or a spirit of lust, maybe a spirit of rebellion you know, where you just, you're just rebelling against the authorities above you or divisiveness or deceit or maybe a spirit of poverty or competition or adultery. You think of David and just a spirit of lust that, that he lusted after Bathsheba. And then you look what was passed down to his own descendants that his own daughter would be raped by his own son. And then another son comes and rapes his, his half-wives, his concubines in his own castle. It could be the spirit of discontentment or fear or bitterness or unforgiveness or maybe addiction or pride or maybe spiritual pride. It could be financial irresponsibility, passivity, like Adam passed down to us. It could be a spirit of strife or greed or idolatry or self-idolatry or blame shifting or control or manipulation or maybe a spirit of narcissism or laziness or gluttony. Or a lack of commitment. Maybe it's a spirit of hopelessness. Or a spirit of depression. Or maybe just complaining. That you're leaving such a terrible example for your children. And God may be saying, listen, before we deal with your child, I want to deal with you. That's what I feel like God was teaching me. That there were things that I needed to take charge of. And that the thief could not come in and steal and destroy Without tying up the strong man. And so God was trying to loose me. And say I want you to cut all the ties. You don't understand how all this works. But I believe many times. That if we will allow God to search us. And let the Holy Spirit identify the spirit. That may be at work within you. Or within me. And recognize it. And then acknowledge it. Say, yes, Lord, I agree with you. And just confess it. Confessing it is saying the same thing that God says about your sin. And although I've been walking in victory over this for 20-something years, it was, it, it was, it was a, a testimony in my life. 
But yet I believe that it's still from my sin so many years ago had a impact on my son. And when I repented of that and I said, I am resisting the devil and not just personally, but the way that it could have influence over my own child. And I renounced it. I said, I want nothing to do with this. I am cutting off all ties. And I am binding this spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, if you bind anything on earth, it will be bound in the heavens. Then I would challenge you to pray over your children. And ask them, ask God, not that just your child would be free from this spirit. But that they would be more than conquerors. And then resolve, it is setting your will. It is setting your will, not relying and trusting in your will, but it's setting your will to say, I am wanting to walk in all that God has for me. So I kind of just laid my soul out there for you. And um, I just shared a couple of things that I hope is a blessing to you guys. Um, And so I would just start this week just asking God, God, is there anything in my life Uh, you don't want negative things being passed down to your children, just like I don't want for my children. But I want so many good things that my children can stand on my shoulders and be blessed. And that's what I desire for your children. So the challenge today is just to, just to ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate anything, maybe even in your past, that could be affecting the life of your children so that the blessings of God may not be flowing the way that he desires. And just ask him to identify those. You acknowledge and confess them, renounce them, break all ties from them, bind those spirits in the mighty name of Jesus, and then resolve to live differently and see God's blessing flow to your children. May God richly bless you. Thank you so much.